What's up you guys? It's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and today we are whipping up something a little bit different. I got some flour, I got some yeast. Some might consider this outside of my wheelhouse. <laughs> However, I have perfected a grilled pizza crust. And I posted about it on Instagram and the crowd went wild. And so I decided I should do a whole video to teach you guys how to make my super simple homemade grilled pizza dough. And that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get started. Let's start with the dough. We need to mix warm water and yeast. I have one and two thirds cup of water and we want it to hit a temperature between 100 degrees and 110 degrees. That means it's warm enough to activate the yeast but not so hot that it kills it. Ask me how I know this. The first time I ever made rolls, I killed it. It was too hot. <laughs> Under 110, above 100. That's your sweet spot. Okay, water just goes in the mixer. Also for your yeast, you need instant yeast, instant quick rise yeast. One packet, if you have a jar of yeast, it's two and a quarter teaspoons. Just shake that into your water. I'm just gonna give it like the tiniest mix and then it's gotta sit for five minutes. <laughs> Can you tell I'm nervous? I don't do a lot of like baking recipes, but this is one I feel really good about. <laughs> we make it all the time. You're really confident about it. <laughs> it turns out great. I think it's just a testimony that if I can make this yeast dough, anybody can make this yeast dough. <laughs> See my little yeasty bubbles that are like floating on the surface and oh, there's even more popping up. That's a good sign. That means our yeast is alive, it's bubbling, and I didn't kill it. So we're ready for our next step. You're gonna add in a quarter cup of olive oil. This is quite a bit of olive oil for this amount of dough, but I think it's the secret that makes this grilled pizza dough have the perfect texture and perfect consistency for cooking right on the grill grates. We also need two teaspoons of salt, and a lot of pizza dough recipes you'll see call for honey or another form of sweetener. I don't put any of that in my grilled pizza dough. I don't want any additional sugars that can burn too quickly over the high heat of the grill. So no sweeteners in mine. Give this a mix until it's all combined. As combined as it can be with putting oil on top of water. Okay. Now we need to add our flour. I'm just gonna leave the mixer on low for the next five to seven minutes and add my flour one cup at a time to our yeast and olive oil mixture. You're going to use about five cups of flour, but stop at four and really get a sense for where the dough looks before you add the fifth cup. And I'll show you what you're looking for so you can get that right texture at home. This is a one and a half cup. Oh. So technically, three. three. <laughs> and I'm not being immensely exact with the flour. Like I said, about five cups, but it's different based on how your flour is and all of these little things. So it's better to have some visual cues to look for and use the cup measurement as a guideline. Similar to when we're cooking meat, like temperature is a guideline, or sorry, Time is a guideline, but temperature is really like your Bible, your gospel. That's what you lean on. <laughs> Use a rubber spatula to scrape down the sides of your um, mixer as needed. Whoa, 
I've turned it up to medium. We're shaking the whole table. So this is after three cups. You can see it's still really stuck to the sides of the bowl. We want that to come together into one homogenous dough ball. One homogenous dough ball. I'm gonna add another cup of flour. There's flour everywhere. I am not a clean baker. That dough is so needy. Okay, so this is just over four cups and you can come in and take a look. Our dough ball is really pulled away from the edges and it's kind of creating this, this doughy shape. But when I press into the dough with my fingers, it stays. I want it to bounce back a little bit, which means I still need to add a little bit more flour and then we'll be good to go. I'll probably add another half a cup or so. This is looking great. All right. I'm gonna call this good. So not only has our dough ball pulled away from the edges, but you can see the outside surface is pretty smooth from where it's been rolling against the ball. We want a nice smooth dough. And like I said, the finger push situation, when I push on the dough now, it actually starts to fill back in and bounce back slowly. Okay, so here's what happens next. We are going to move this dough. I'm gonna put a little flour down right here on my table. I'm gonna move the dough to the table and then I'm gonna divide it into dough balls. Now this amount of dough will either make eight personal size pizzas, which can be really fun if you have kids like I do. Everybody can kind of pick their own toppings um, or you can divide it into four medium sized pizzas. I don't recommend going any bigger than that, like two pizzas, for example, that are bigger because they can be a little bit thick and difficult to maneuver on the grill. So I say either four or eight. Now we really don't need to knead this anymore because it's already been kneaded. We don't need to knead it, but I kind of like, want, want <laughs> you want to knead it? I need you to knead me. Okay, interlude aside. <laughs> We're gonna divide this. I like to kind of make like a loggy shape almost so that it's easier for me to divide this evenly. You could probably be smarter than me and use a knife or like a scale, make it very even. I'm just gonna eyeball it and go in half and then in half and then in half. So I have four evenly sized dough balls. into a nice little ball of dough -da -da, and set it on a lightly oiled baking sheet. I just sprayed mine with avocado oil. Canola oil is great too. You could probably brush it with olive oil. That would work awesome. Alrighty, we're gonna take our balls of dough, cover them lightly with a damp paper towel. You don't want this swimming in water, but you don't want it to be totally dry. And then we're gonna let these guys rise for the next hour and a half, 90 minutes. Keep them somewhere warm. It is currently 105 degrees outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave mine out here and that'll actually help them rise really quickly. They might be done in an hour. So I'm gonna check back on them in 60 minutes. If you're doing this at home, sometimes I like to put it on my stovetop, not turn any of the burners on, but that kind of seems to be a place that collects a lot of heat um, and just let them go for 90 minutes. Dough balls have been rising for about an hour. In my case, they're huge and they're about ready. So we're gonna prep the rest of our toppings so that when our dough hits the grill, Everything is ready to go because these grilled pizzas move quickly. This isn't something you put in your oven for 20 minutes. The pizzas really only take like three to five minutes to cook. And then, you know, anyway, it goes fast. So we're gonna do barbecue chicken pizzas today, which means I need to grill up some chicken. This works great if you have leftover chicken. Maybe leftover pulled pork would be delicious on these. 
But since I've got my charcoal grill going anyway, we're just gonna throw some chicken breasts right on there. I'm gonna season them with sweet rub and then I'm gonna dump out my coals to create kind of this two zone heat situation. So the coals are on one half of the grill, really high temperatures, and the other half of the grill doesn't have any coals and that'll give me some nice heat management for pizza cooking. And the chicken is just gonna go right on the hot heat side and we're gonna cook it until it's done. We're just gonna cook these five to seven minutes per side until the chicken reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit and then we can pull it off and get our pizzas onto those hot coals. Chicken's off the grill and sliced. Dough balls are risen and I have all of the rest of my ingredients prepped for my pizzas because they're gonna move. Now, I need my olive oil. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, everything's fine. A little bit of olive oil on your hands to shape your dough balls. Look at that beautiful risen piece of dough. <clears throat> so we're just gonna take our crust and we don't wanna flatten them, but we kinda wanna stretch them out slowly by grabbing a little bit close to the edges and kinda letting gravity help us out with stretching the dough. And this dough ball is one that will serve like two people. So I would say like a small to medium sized pizza. It's a really good dough. This why is a good this, dough. Why does this work so good on the grill, do you think? It's the olive oil in the dough. There's no sugar. It just has the right balance. It's a little bit thicker, I think, than most traditional pizza doughs that you would cook in your oven in terms of like the density. But I don't know. It just, it just works. Okay, I'm happy with this guy. So we're gonna open the grill and put this right on the direct heat side of the grill. We're gonna crisp up one side first. About how long, boss? Mm, like two to three minutes. It's gonna go pretty quick. We want some nice, like, crispy, crunchy, browned edges on the bottom. It'll give us a great base to layer our sauce and toppings onto. So only one side? Only one side on the direct heat side of the grill, yes. So this beauty has not been on long, but you can see the bubbles forming in the dough. The color on the bottom, see that? Beautiful. So I have a nice big fat spatula, but you could probably use like a normal spatula also. But this guy does make it easy. Okay, couple minutes on direct heat. Flippy, isn't that perfect? That's perfect. The goldeny brown is exactly what you want. Next up is toppings. I'm gonna start with my everything barbecue sauce because I'm doing a barbecue chicken pizza. But if you're doing like a regular pizza, this is where you'd put on your marinara sauce. Or if you were going crazy, your buffalo sauce. Back of a spoon, give it a little spread. You don't wanna go too heavy, but you want it all over. Then we come in with our cheeses. I like a mozzarella, and this was hand shredded. Don't use the pre-shredded stuff. It doesn't melt as good. There's a coating on the outside of it to keep it from sticking together in the bag but that actually prevents it from melting as nice and gooey too on your pizzas and soups and whatever else you want to put it on. Throwing on some thin sliced red onions, bell peppers, sausage, olives. You can go crazy here. Take some of our sliced chicken breast that we just cooked and then top the whole thing off with some medium, ooh, some medium cheddar cheese. And this is where you close the lid, leave it for five to seven minutes. We really want 
the cheese to get melty on top and taste super delicious. But check it after a couple minutes, depending on how hot your grill is. You don't want to overcook anything. But leave it on the indirect side. Leave it on the indirect side with the lid closed. The nice thing about it being on the indirect side is you really don't have to worry about the bottom burning because it doesn't have coals immediately underneath it. And since we charred the top of the dough on the direct heat side first, we don't have to worry about our dough being undercooked or not being baked through. It's kind of the best of both worlds where you get that crunchy, crispy crust texture and it's nice and soft and supple also. It's like the perfect pizza crust bite. All right, pizza is technically done. I could take it off right now, move it to the platter, slice it up and have a delicious pizza. If you are like me and you like a really crunchy, crispy crust, you can slide your pizza over to the direct heat side of the grill. And you remember how fast the pizza cooked when we initially put it on? <laughs> it's gonna cook even faster now because it's already so hot. So I would say a minute max and your pizza will be ready to come off the direct heat side and it'll have those nice brown, crispy, crunchy spots on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> All right, I have three more pizzas to make. We're gonna do some with marinara and mozzarella for the kids, but honestly, we're all here for the barbecue chicken pizza. So that's the one that we're gonna finish up and taste test. Now, in my house, we love topping this with fresh cilantro. If you are somebody that does not like cilantro, green onions are an absolutely delicious addition to the topping of this pizza. Just tear a few leaves, sprinkle about as you please. It'll give you nice color, but also a really great pop of fresh, bright, herby when everything on here is kind of like tangy and smoky and cheesy and rich. And if you're feeling fancy and saucy, you can add a little extra barbecue sauce just drizzled across the top. She's so pretty. <laughs> Can you hear that crunch, crispy, crusty, crunchy, crunchy when I cut it? I'm gonna like get my microphone. Ooh, the cheese pull. Mm -hmm. You did it. I'm gonna burn my whole face off. <laughs> it's perfect. Mmm, okay. Cheesy goodness aside, look at this crust. It is perfect thickness. It's crunchy on the bottom, but not just crunchy for the sake of being crunchy. Like this crunch has flavor from the grill and it tastes so good. That chicken on there with the sweet rub and the everything sauce and the cilantro and red onions, like it all plays together for this creamy, tangy, fresh, kind of spicy bite. I'm very, very, very into. This is my favorite pizza. Come here, Todd. Okay, my friends, you guys need to make this pizza at home. When you do, snap a photo, use the hashtag HeyGrillHey when you post to social media. That way I can see it and cheer you on on your journey to becoming a backyard barbecue hero. And I wanna see all the fun things that you guys put on your homemade grilled pizza crust, whether it's barbecue chicken or otherwise.